and this is the second session in the introduction to generative models with Runway. Um, last week we introduced generative models, we talked a little bit about GANs and autoencoders and some of their properties, and this week we're going to continue by introducing a, generative, a particular GAN called Big GAN, which is one of the more infamous GANs around, uh, that was introduced by DeepMind uh, about a year and a half ago, and we're going to use, use it as an example to um, you know, elaborate on some of the finer details and some of the properties of GANs that you're going to encounter uh, while trying to use them for various things. And then uh, I'll do a big GAN demo uh, inside of Runway. So a uh, quick review of what we talked about last week. So if you, um, if this is the first time you're looking at a, a video about me from Generative Models, I would um, suggest looking back in the last video that we did, which was the introduction to this series. Uh, but in case you want to get the gist of it, Generative models are neural networks that learn how to represent a particular type of data set, let's say images, and then um, they learn to do so in a way that allows them to create new images that look like they resemble the original data set. So if you have a data set of faces, you can train one of these generative models to produce new faces that look like they came from the original data set. And often the way it's structured is that there is a something what we call a, like a latent input vector, sometimes it's labeled Z by convention, which is a string of random numbers essentially that is input into the generator of the neural network, uh, the generator part of the, of the generative model, and that synthesizes the images. And so this is kind of the, the top level view of, of uh, generative models. Um, there are kind of two, um, there are two particularly uh, good types of generative models that you'll see a lot. Uh, there are these autoencoders, which are neural networks that learn um, uh, in the first half a sort of encoder function, which will take the images or whatever it's data, data it's trained on, and then to compress it into some kind of a, a feature vector, which represents the high-level um, aspects or the features of the data set. And then there's the decoder, which is the second half of the network, which essentially takes one of these compression, uh, these one of these compressed feature representations, these, these latent input vectors, and uh, synthesizes an image out of it. And so the net, the autoencoder is trained to reconstruct the images perfectly. And if it does a good job, it must do so through this bottleneck of the latent input vector. Uh, and, and and this is how it develops a very good representation. And then there's generative adversarial networks, which are kind of similar. But instead of having the encoder and the decoder in a single neural network, you have two neural networks, um, a generator and a discriminator, which are trained simultaneously in an adversarial fashion against each other. The generator is kind of like the decoder in the autoencoder. It takes these, it takes a latent input vector and produces images. And then the discriminator is a classifier, which is trained to tell apart images from the original data set and from the generator. So it's basically trying to tell whether the images are uh, real or fake, quote unquote. And uh, GANs have been uh, really, really successful. They, they've probably been the most um, successful in this space over the last few years. And um, they show all sorts of really interesting properties. So as we talked about um, last week, the idea is that in this latent space, features that, that are very close to each other end up appearing very uh, are closely embedded within the latent space so let's say you have an image of uh, images of many many different things and among them you have images of faces then you'll find that the uh, images of faces occupy a small sliver of the latent space that, that's very compact and close together and this allows us to find uh, regions of that space that have the features that we um, that are particularly relevant in some kind of a context and we also saw um, well, I didn't show this last week, but um, but this is kind of one of the original GAN papers, and it showed how you can do uh, arithmetic on these latent input vectors. So, for example, if there's a particular feature, there's different features that you can find that are encoded um, in this latent space, and if we find the vectors that, that uh, closely correspond to those, uh, we can essentially do arithmetic with them in order to uh, add, delete, and, and edit the features that we want. And so this is kind of a, one of the more classic highlights from the original DC GAN paper. And this is another example that shows how you can uh, put glasses on people, um, you, can, um, you can find vectors that change 
uh, hair color, gender, and all these kind of different uh, aspects in, in the sort of high-level feature space of faces. Now, big GANs uh, are probably, um, well, the most realistic, uh, it, most realistic gender adversarial networks we've seen so far. Big GANs are just crazy. I mean, you can see the, these images are entirely fake. I mean, the dog gets me every time. It looks like a real dog, but it's totally not a real dog. Um, it, it's really good at dogs. It's not as good at other things, but um, so they kind of cherry picked the nice examples, but it's pretty impressive. And so you'll see that uh, there's things like, um, there's a thousand different categories within Big GAN. So it's a single general adversarial network, which is capable of synthesizing all of these uh, different things, the 1000 categories of, of ImageNet, but all contained within a single model. And the reason why it's called Big GAN is, is well, it's just that. It's, it's that the model is extremely large, both in terms of um, uh, the number of classes, but, but also just the number of parameters in the, um, in the model. It's a very large model, and it also was trained on a very large data set. And so it's just really, really big. And the authors described how in the first iteration of it, it was trained in something using something like 500 GPUs, which is really, really prohibitive, obviously. Um, later, uh, within a few months, they were able to release a repository on, on GitHub, which allows you to train it for only <laughs> eight GPUs, which is still uh, quite prohibitive, but, um, but, is, but is at least accessible to mere mortals. So um, that's kind of the, the rate of progress of things. Um, I'm sure big GANs will be trainable in the single GPU within due time. Um, we'll just kind of look out for that. And so this is just some more of the samples that they generate. Uh, really, really crazy, powerful stuff. So let's look at Big GAN. I'm gonna pull up Runway, and if you go to the browse models, you'll see that we're on to uh, Runway version 10.4. So development really, really going quickly. The bait, or well, I should say 0 0.10.4, um, but development's proceeding very quickly. And um, yeah, there's lots of really cool new features, including ones relevant to this series that are going to be public very soon. So very exciting stuff. So okay, let's uh, let's have a look at this big GAN repository, and um, as you can see, as we as we've seen before, if you're interested in more of the information about it, the the link to the the research paper is um, is very instructive, and so I would check that out as well. And then the original repository is over here, and I'm going to go ahead and add it to a workspace, and um, we're going to use the in of course there's only one choice here, which is to use an input vector. Uh, but then you have these thousand different categories and you see that there's tons of them, right? So I'm not even, <laughs> well, let's let's go ahead and run this. Um, I, I don't really know what to try. Let's maybe go with the desk. So I'm going to click on the desk. If, um, if you're interested in knowing what categories these are, these are the uh, categories that you'll find in the ImageNet um, data set. And so there's a thousand of them. They're, um, they're ordered um, by... They're ordered here alphabetically. Um, there's around 100 and something dog breeds and lots of undersea creatures and lots of sort of different stuff like that. Anyway, um, let's let's let Runway warm up a little bit. The big GAN model is quite large, so it, it does tend to take a little while to start up. Once it gets going, though, it's pretty quick. And um, in the meantime, we can also explore it. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about this idea of sampling distance. So uh, sampling distance, we had this last time. In the last video, we also had sampling distance as one of the parameters in StyleGAN. And with sampling distance, the, uh, it's just the, the, the magnitude of the difference between all of these um, input, uh, well, okay, so each of these little quadrants, it represents a single input vector, and uh, which will produce a, uh, an image of this particular class that we've selected. And so uh, the input vectors, of course, are uh, they have a space between them, and the amount of space between them is regulated by the sampling distance. So if you set the sampling distance really low, all of these um, these quadrants will refer to um, input vectors which are very very close to each other, and so um, correspondingly, the images that they generate will not be especially um, will not be especially uh, different from each other. And if the sampling distance is very high then we'll get a lot more variety. So okay, there we are. Uh, this is, I've selected the desk class, and right? you can see the category is desk. And so these are all different desks, and you see that they, all of the images are quite similar to each other, uh, and that's because the sampling distance is a little low. 
Maybe let's make the sampling distance a bit higher and we should get a little bit more variety in this uh, grid. Okay, so you can see that we're getting yeah, some different desks here. Desks often have computers, it seems. Um, let's try the acoustic guitar. So I'm, I just selected acoustic guitar and that will very quickly select another, um, yeah, another image. So yeah, here we got some acoustic guitars and you notice that there seems to be a person playing the acoustic guitar sometimes. Um, pretty gnarly, gnarly, gnarly stuff. So uh, I would really encourage you to just look at all of the different categories. Um, I mean, not all of them because there's a lot of them. Let's try to fly. Um, but this will give you a chance to explore a little bit this model, um, get, a, get a chance to see some of the um, you know, different images that it produces. It's really good with animals, I find. Um, some of the other ones are a little bit more um, haphazard, I guess. Um, let's see here. How about a sweatshirt? And um, so, yeah, really, really fun stuff. Another fun thing I want to show you is uh, Big Bigan. So if you search for Big Gan again, you'll see that there's actually another repository here called Big Bigan. And Big Bigan is a, um, is a, a generative model that's related to Big Gan that was um, essentially made so that you can encode real images and place them into Big Gan. Um, so see, here's the idea. You, you have this Big Gan model, which is able to synthesize all of these different kinds of images, but sometimes we'd, uh, we'd like to be able to take a real image and then get the Big Gan equivalent of it. And the reason we'd like to do that is because then we have it inside this generative model, and so we can do all the things with it that generative models allow us to do. We can change features, we can mutate them between um, you know, different ca categories. We can do a lot of really, really cool, fun stuff. So I'm gonna really quickly show you the big Bigan repository. This may be the subject of a, um, perhaps something a little bit longer in future videos I'm thinking about, uh, because there's actually a really a lot here that we can do with this technique. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna introduce you to the basic thing and then maybe we'll hold off um, on the other stuff later. So if I add it here, it basically works very similar to Bigan, except now, instead of taking an input vector, it will actually take a, um, an input image as a source image. So for example, we can go onto uh, file and uh, as soon as it loads, I'm gonna be able to grab an image. I'll just do that while it's running. Um, and for example, we can take this image of the mountains in Turkey here, which is um, you know your standard sort of nature-y mountains image. And then it sends it to Big N and Big N gives us an equivalent or, or it basically gets us its best reconstruction. This doesn't look exactly like this, but the idea is that it will um, find the ideal latent vector, the ideal Z and Y, um, in order to produce something which resembles this image, at least in feature space. So let's, let's actually try this again. I'm going to click on another file. Um, let's try a tennis ball. I'm kind of cherry picking because I know that tennis ball happens to be a category in this, although I haven't tried this and so I don't know how well this is going to do. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. All right, all right. So Big Bigan has, has its work cut out for it. There is a tennis ball category in, in Big Gan, so it's not as good as I imagined it would be. Let's try the elephant. Um, and uh, let's see if we can recreate an elephant. So I, I think this works a lot better if you also use a... Um, this is quite an elephant. Yeah, well, um, I think this works a lot better if it also figures out why. So I have this um, example of doing this w where I used, um, where I basically uh, used a classifier to figure out what Y should be, and then that becomes the input to begin as well. And that seems to work actually pretty well. Um, this this leaves something to be desired, but it's 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 still pretty fun and kind of zany. Um, okay, so that's that's all for today. Um, I'm going to be exploring more stuff with GANs in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll look at some of these uh, generative models that, that filter images, so kind of image to image generative models. Maybe we'll do a little bit more exploring with um, sort of big GAN, re um, this reconstruction idea. And then uh, similar to that, I wanna um, introduce a model called GLOW, which, which is an invertible generative model, which is kind of like what we're doing here. That's all gonna be in future future sessions. So there's a lot of really cool, exciting stuff to look out for. So um, stick with me and, and uh, yeah, we'll be introducing that stuff in due time. So, okay, that's all for today and see you soon.